All right, and we're live. Um, let me pause the video so I don't watch myself. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Scott, and I'm the founder and engineer at a company. Oh, there's my theme. Uh, at a company called Chickadee Tech. Um, it's a company I just started by myself. Um, we're now like in the post-launch phase, which is awfully exciting. So I, I spent from October to basically July doing product development and uh, production and manufacturing and all that stuff. There's some old videos that I've been releasing that you can see um, as part of that. But um, the initial reaction was, was interesting because uh, the price is not cheap. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, like to get into a basic kit is about a hundred dollars, and a lot of people were comparing that to like the all-in-one flight controllers that you can get. Um, and they are uh, like, and definitely on the more expensive side. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry. Um. And so there's a, there's a number of reasons for the price. One is that uh, it's a very low batch. So basically I self-funded and I wanted to minimize my investment while still um, building enough to make it somewhat reasonable. So, so this first batch was really for early adopters and people were really excited about PolyStack as a platform. And uh, that's what I really want to encourage people uh, to think about is like what are the possibilities um, as the volume gets higher, of course, we can we can drop the price, but uh, it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem when you're starting off so small. Um, and then on top of that, like one of the best options I found was uh, manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, with a startup out of Houston, and so they're doing both manufacturing and fulfillment for me, which is has been really really nice. They're called Macrofab if you're interested. Um, but again, that doesn't help the price a, a little bit, but although. If you work with a Chinese manufacturer, you risk uh, communication issues and, and having to go the cost of flying to China and stuff too. So it's a trade-off and, and I chose to go with Macrofab because Made in America is cool. I've actually visited them. They're great people. Um, and then on top of that, I also wanted to show uh, in this video, one of the things uh, that, you're, that you're paying for, which is support. Um, I've seen some flight controllers come out without even like having versions of Betaflight uh, actively maintained, things like that. And I wanted to stop them. Um, and so I just wanted to show you like the work that goes into keeping it up to date. So what we're going to do today Uh, so what we're doing today is we're going to take the existing uh, beta flight code that I have uh, and we're going to just update it. Um, so if I switch to the computer, uh, the code is stored in a thing called Git, which is a version control system that keeps track of um, how the code has changed over time and allows you to do things like roll it back, roll it forward. Uh, then she's throwing a fit. She wants to be on my lap, but she's not. Vin is my cat. One of my two cats. Come here. Come here. Come here, kitty. Let me show you. Um, yeah, so Git is what, what the source code is, is stored in, and it's done on a website called GitHub. And so let me switch to that. So this is uh, my version of Git of beta flight. She, what is she doing? Um, sorry, I'm like gonna go watch somebody's house for a little while. They're moving up here and they need to get their internet. Man, stop. Come here. This is who I'm talking to. I wanted to call her the department or the the VP of Human Resources, because she makes sure that I don't code too much. But I just started. 
It just started, cat. Um, anyway, so, so code is stored in a thing called git. Uh, it's hosted on a site called GitHub. This is our version of it. You can see it's all the same readme and everything, except it supports both the Chickadee F3 flight controller and the F4 flight controller. And it also has new code for the um, the cool auto configuration that both of those flight controllers do. Uh, so what I typically do when I'm updating is first I just glance at the recent code commits to get an idea about what has changed recently since I did it last time. Um, so basically the process is going to be is we're going to do what's called a rebase, which basically... Stop. Go away. She loves to tip over this garbage. It's the most annoying thing ever. So a git rebase is basically... At some point in time, the code that you're basing it on uh, was fixed and you changed it, right? So we added F3 support, F4 support. And now what basically that base that we started with has changed because they've also uh, like made it better, like the base better. So what rebasing does is it takes all of those changes that I originally made on a sing single base to add like the flight controller support and things like that, and I'm going to rebase it. So I'm going to take it from that old base to the new base with the current code. And the way that you do that is a command called git rebase, and it gives you a chance to basically fake redoing all that work. So if, um, if like file formats have changed or functionality has changed. Uh, a lot of what's changed recently is the, the format of the target.h files uh, in beta flight. So when we do that rebase, we're given a chance to basically update it to the new style. And that will create new commits based on the old commits um, that basically you can think of as like work that we've um, done based on that new base to begin with. Uh, if that makes sense. So I'll just I'll show you how it is. And it dif the difficulty of this depends a little bit on... So this this is an interesting commit. Uh, F3 URIO fix. I don't know what that actually fixes. But we, maybe we want to pay attention to that. Um, I think that this also includes... Uh, yeah, four-way fix for F4. So this should fix the pass-through. Um, the pass-through issues that were happening uh, with the L Heli suite and the F4. So that's one of the, the interesting things I'm playing with for this. So, so how do we do the rebase? So the first thing we need to do is get into our directory. Um, I store mine here. And now I want to git fetch forest B styles. Code. Vin, stop. She's gonna get kicked out. Don't chew on power cables, you stupid cat. Go away. She's kicked out. Enough of that. Um, yay, we have one per person watching. Say hello in the chat. Um, okay, so the way that we do the rebase, uh, it's git rebase, and then dash i is for interactive. So this gives us a chance to basically restructure uh, the commits while we're doing that like fake fake commit process. It's kind of how I think of it. Um, so git rebase forest b style master. So we we are originally based on a Boris D, B style master, but master has since changed. So we're going to rebase onto it again. And in fact, you can see here that uh, this is what's telling us that master actually changed. So we're going to do git rebase i, and this is going to tell us all of the different commits that we had made uh, based on the the previous base. Uh, so what I've discovered as I've done this a number of times already is that this gives you a chance to basically, you know, if you miss something in the first rebase, you can create other commits, and then with the next rebase, merge those commits back to what you actually, like, 
want to pretend it's part of. So you'll see here that I have this thing called, or this commit with the, starts with the word fix up. So fix up the F4 target to set correct I squared C pins and turn on UR5. So instead of leaving this as a separate commit, I'm actually going to integrate it into the F4 one directly. And I'm going to do that by replacing the word pick here with fix up, um, which tells rebase, as it says down here, it, it's, it melds it into the previous commit, but discards this commit's log message. Basically, like, I did the rebase, found out it didn't work, I fixed it, and now I want to integrate it back next time. So ppm autoconfig, this is also a fix up. And SD card detect pin. So it's kind of interesting, like it kind of boggles my mind. Oh, is the one person watching left? Um, that's okay. Uh, the one thing that kind of boggles me about the rebase process is the fact that you can actually reorder commits. Um, and that's because a commit is just a diff. It's just a patch. It's saying, like, find this line, replace it with this, or add these lines after it. Um, so the rebase process basically takes those patches. You can reorder them however you want, but it, there's no guarantee that that patch can actually be applied. Um, and so if it fails, as you'll see, it'll kick out and say, like, hey, you got to manually change this so it works. OK, so that's all the fix-ups we want to do, I think. So we'll say we're done. And now it's going to try to automatically do it. And look at that. <laughs> that's not interesting at all. So all of the diffs managed to apply uh, just fine, but we're not quite done. You, sometimes it'll stop and say like, hey, like I don't know how to deal with this um, diff that I thought we had. Um, hey, if you're watching, somebody's watching again, say hi in the chat. <laughs> um, so the, the rebase went smoothly uh, from the get-go, but now we need to make sure that we can actually compile it. Uh, and first, I'm actually going to clean the target directory. Hey. So for a recap, for the one person who just joined, we're uh, updating beta flight uh, in our GitHub um, so that we can use the absolute latest and greatest on the Chickadee F3 and F4. Um, so we did a rebase, and now we're uh, compiling beta flight. Um, Something with the protocol buffer stuff means we have to run it twice, so we'll just run it twice. And let's see if I have my flight controllers. I can actually show how to get it on the flight controller too, but they're not sitting right here. I have to go grab my quads. But let's just make sure they both compile. This can catch things the diff or the patch process was okay with, but in reality are not okay. So we'll clean F4 also. And we have to run it twice again. What up, Cole? Cole, I should make a copy of 3.0 for your v4. I'll just do that right now. Compiling, compiling, compiling. What I'd like to do is just make these available as releases. I don't want to release it yet because I don't have the target. Awesome. OK, I'll do that. So if you look at the git status, we're all clean. 
Yeah, Kyle will be happy that he can get a, a V4 also. Um, I might do, I'll drop that in the Facebook chat uh, rather than posting it because I don't want to confuse people. So everything is clean, and now we're going to do a git push. So what push does is it takes the code as it is on my computer, and it pushes it up to GitHub's uh, version. So if we look, go back here. Right now we can see that it, the last thing was fix up ppm auto config. But now if we refresh, it's now just support ppm auto config because we merged them back together. OK. So since Cole's watching and reminding me. So Cole is one of the flight testers, for those of you watching the meter. Um, he's had it for a while and has been really helpful in providing feedback. I can actually edit the code there. So he has an old prototype version, and that has some slight pinout differences. So I'm just going to open data flight. The editor I'm using is called Atom, A T O M. Source main target. Three, target H, and at the top here, uh, we have what version of the board. V5 is like basically every board after. So that includes production boards, but we'll do V4 here. And we'll just clean it just to be sure. I haven't flight. I haven't flown this yet, but I'll, I'll drop it in the Facebook chat that we've got. What I like to do is rename this. Just to be a little bit clearer. So that's one way that you can identify exactly where in the Git history you are. cv 4hex Kyle's been bugging me about this too, so that's good. Sending a file. Give them a disclaimer. Now I'm actually going to undo that and we'll do it. In. Uh, let me just go get a quad and we'll flash it and we'll be done. Here's the naughty cat. OK. 
Okay, so my quads are kind of in pieces because I took them apart for uh, taking pictures with. Um, but here's the state of my alien. It's got an, a prototype F3 on there, but it's a V8, so it runs the same code as the production board. You're welcome, Cole. Let me know if that flies. Should be all right. Data flight's developed well. So it's pretty stable even from Git. But we'll just see here that it flashes. I have props on, but I don't have a battery plugged in, so I'm not too worried about prop spinning. USB doesn't have enough power to really do any damage. Okay, so we've got everything connected, and we can see that, like, as I now she gets the lap she wants. Hi, cutie. Um, so right now we're running firmware released on July 20th. And you can see as I move it, it moves, which is awesome. It was, it was work to just get to that step. But we're going to disconnect, and now we're going to flash it. And right now what you do have to do is a manual flash. So you do load firmware local. You don't have this many options for you, but uh, one I just compiled is this one. You can see 1234 today. And now we're going to hit flash firmware. She is such a live cat. And it works. And the board's flashing. And we can see a USB modem, blah, blah, blah here. And we can connect. And the gyro still works, which is always good. Um, the VCP on the F4s have been having some issues. But this one looks all good. So um, there's nothing currently stacked on top. Actually, let's just show it off. So uh, I don't think we did a full chipper race. And maybe we should have. Let's just do that. Sure, it's always good to do a full chip erase in case the memory is memory structure has changed. And with PolySAC, it's not a big deal because most of the important stuff is auto config. So let's just flash that, and I'll show you like the default state, and then I'll slap. I have an X4R here. Um, the purple boards are like early prototypes with the X4 on it. It looks kind of like a bug. Um, so let's reconnect and let's look at our ports. And we can see that they're all disabled for telemetry. They're all disabled for serial RX. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to slap this X4R on it, even though the, the X4R that goes on this is a different one. So I can't let me do it in front of the camera. So uh, just pushing it down onto the spacers. There we go. Now it's connected, and let's reconnect it to you. And the light on the XOR doesn't light up because it doesn't get powered until the main flight battery's on there. But if we look at the port configuration again, you can see that it's changed. It worked. Um, two of these UARTs now have one has serial RX and one has smart port set. So uh, you don't need to worry about setting that stuff every time you do a full chip erase or switch from a D4R2 to an X4R. Uh, the black box works that way too, so if you put the micro SD card on there, it sets everything for you, which is awesome. Um, you can see here, it also set RX serial just fine, and it set the protocol or provider to SBUS, as you would expect. Um, you just didn't need to do it yourself. It also turns on telemetry. Uh, it does that all just based on, on what's in the stack uh, 
for me, I do like to change some other things while I'm at it. I like my mid throttle lower, my max throttle higher. The board orientation is okay if the polystack connector is in the back. I do like battery monitoring, which I should have auto turn on because with any setup here, it'll work. Um, and RSSI, I don't have set up. No current meter. So that looks okay. So it's safe in the loop. And that's it, I think. Um, we could also flash the F4 to make sure the flashing process of the F4 works, but uh, I'm not going to do that now. This video is already 25 minutes long. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, that's part of what, well, the support that we give for beta flight, including like fixing bugs and stuff, that's all something that you pay for when you when you purchase Polystack. Um, but if you look in the comments, you can see that there's also a discount code that is available there. I think it's for 5% off. Um, so yeah, uh, that should make it a little less expensive for you. And uh, if you have any feedback, feel free to email support at chickadee.tech. Um, the boards are available at chickadee.tech. Um, that's uh, some beta flight development in a nutshell, and uh, how we keep beta flight for chickadee boards up to date with the latest GitHub stuff. Um, so uh, I'd show you the cat. She's on the lap. Um, thanks for watching, and <laughs> yeah, Cole, you, you haven't even had auto configure work. All your boards are pre-auto configure. Anyway, thanks for watching, Cole and the mystery person. Uh, I'll probably broadcast some more design stuff next week um, because I'm itching to get some more one control board. Uh, the link is wrong. Ooh. Oh, it's the stupid exclamation point. Okay. I don't have any idea how to say your name, but uh, I think before, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, the chickadee.tech one. I added a space. Um, between the chickadee tech and the exclamation point. I always do that. <laughs> It should be fixed now. I really uh, do. You have you have any questions before I finish? One person in the chat. What I can do is pop it up. Uh, chat. Move it over here. So. So people can see what I'm seeing. So it's not that so weird. Um. No E resellers yet. I had one person ask if they could be like the exclusive E reseller, but I'm a little wary of E resellers. Um, although I know that they'll be really beneficial to getting uh, lower cost shipping. Um, so the best I can offer you now is like find some people to buy it with, and and then they get it all shipped over in one batch. Um, do you ship to the EU? So I, I ship to the EU, but I don't, there's no reseller available right now. So I think I, I shipped one for, to France this morning via like the lowest or the cheapest USPS option. I think it was $14, um, which is really not bad at all, except we'll see how long it takes to get there. Um, but price wise, fourteen dollars for fourteen US to get it shipped is not not bad. Um, does that answer your question? If you email support at, I can 
also give you a discount code for a little bit more than 5%. Uh, taxes are killer above 24 euros. Uh, what do they screen about it, though? Because we can't change the cost of what you're importing. Like, we'll declare 100 and something or, or so. Yeah, so if, if the taxes are killing you, like just uh, email support at Chickadee Tech and I'll see what I can do as far as giving you a bit more discount to, to offset that. I'm totally interested in, in giving some discounts to get these in people's hands who are interested in it. Especially if you're interested in developing mods or control boards or software for it. Um, Yeah, just email me. I'm happy to work with you. And if you uh, if you do contribute to uh, any of the Chickadee Tech repositories, Betaflight, INAV, um, you can actually get an auto issued uh, discount. I'll just show that right now. Um, I'm really excited about it, but nobody's taken advantage of it yet. But if you do chickadee.tech/active-contributor, um, I'm already logged in here, so it's it already knows my username. Um, it takes a little while because it's pulling a lot of data from the GitHub repository. But basically, uh, based on the work that I've done on GitHub, it issued me a 20% discount straight up, um, which is approaching like what I pay for everything. So that's, uh, that's a really good deal. 20% um, is huge. I know the boards are kind of pricey to get-go, but this should hopefully get it in the hands of... Um, in the hands of people that are really interested in doing development. So if you do GitHub stuff, you can put in your uh, you can put in your username and it'll tell you what the discount is before you actually have to log in. But you can see it's giving me a bunch of score just because I did all the Chikibi tech repo stuff. Um, yeah, Painless 360 does a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, if you know him, like have him send me an email and I'd be happy to send it to him. He's done some really cool analysis of like controllers. Um, I sent one to Joshua Bardwell. I don't know if you saw that review, but he, he did a really cool overview of it. Um, right now I'm kind of struggling with the like fact that a lot of people are like, whoa, it's so much um, because it is a lot more than like a Moto Lab right now. I'm hoping that uh, with some of the, the, the mod developments that you'll see start next week, um, like I'm in a prototype of VTX and uh, I was thinking about a wireless, a Wi-Fi card one too, so you could do easy GUI over Wi-Fi to your quad. Um, I'm thinking about those two. I also want to do an INAV one. Um, so yeah, I think as the, as the ecosystem grows and the volume grows, we'll drop the price. And so... Uh, I'm hopeful. It's just, uh, it was kind of a shock. I was hoping more people would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we got a couple sales, which was really cool. And as I said, like, I understand that it's a XSR cradle. <laughs> That's a great question. And the reason that I chose not to do the XSR is because it, um, because it doesn't have pin headers, it's not as structural, like mechanically attachable. Like the pin header or the, the JST connection is much, uh, sorry, I have a cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, the XSR is much less, oh, sorry. I, I was showing you, let me switch back to the computer. I've been assuming that I was on computer view the whole time. Um, so the XSR cradle gets you all the fu functionality that the X4R cradle does, but the X4R is, has the, the pin headers are more, more mechanically, um, they're better mechanically than, than the XR, XSR. Although I was looking at the, um, doing a lemon sat RX one, let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, 
I don't know where my lemon went, but um, it has the same thing where it just has a JST plug and no pen headers, but it has um, things that are called castellations, which is basically half of a pen header. Um, so if, if I sh hold up there, this is the micro minimum OSD, and uh, except for the bottom edge, every, all those things on the top are called castellations. So the Lemon RX will work at, as a cradle um, because the Lemon RX actually has castellations. Now I don't know what the XSR looks like without the case on it, so if you wanted to send me a picture, if it has those castellations, it would be possible to make one that places to place on it, but um, the pin headers are just like, they're, they're so much stronger, like, uh, yeah. It's just a much more, it's a much better mechanical. It has no case. Does it have castellations? I don't have one, that's why I'm asking. Let's look it up. That's not the one I'm talking about. Let's just look at the Google image search. Yeah, so it does look like it has four. Four pin editors on the side. That could work, but. I don't know, do you just have an XSR already? Is that why you're asking? Yeah, you can deepen. <laughs> um, I mean, we could throw one together if you're interested in it. The, the mods are relatively straightforward to create, and in fact, if we look, I think I have a video of me making bags for R1. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's not public. Yeah, that's the tricky thing, like, just supporting every receiver under the sun is is hard. Like the receiver breakout is more expensive than the cradles just because it's got a lot of circuitry to be able to do like 3.3 volts or 5 volts or like logic level shifting and all that stuff. Um, but if we look at my videos, mounting, 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 mounting. The polystack M0 stuff is one thing I want to get back to. Testing for shorts. Signing the top test jig. Yeah, I am designing the micro SD card. I'll drop this link in the chat. Yeah. It's doable. You, I mean, you could like wrap tape around it for the structural support if you needed extra stuff. Um, I've actually stopped using all eight pins on the X4R, just doing, I think it's six. Um, the four signals plus ground and power makes it a little easier to move X4Rs from one cradle to another. Um, but there's, I did a lot of streams way back before everything was launched, and so there's, there's some, if you're interested in doing electronics design, there's some, there's some neat stuff, I think. It's like all long form, so it's like super long video, but, and it's kind of this format, but uh, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, it's an interesting way to learn. That's what I found when I was learning how to do all this stuff, is that it's a... Uh, long form videos are great if you just want to see exactly what somebody did to do something, right? Like, if you want to see exactly how to change the oil in your car, you don't care if it's a 20-minute video because it's a 20-minute process, right? Like, having access to all that is kind of awesome. But, yeah, do you have any more questions before we go? I don't know why but I can see who's in the chat.
so see it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for watching. It's been awesome. Um, no problem. If you have uh, if you have any more questions, here's the email. Uh, go straight to me. Um, current sensor we've been talking about. Um, I don't know if you saw like those Facebook messages pop up, but that was Sean. He's a he's the one working on the PDB, and we've been talking about adding a current sensor. Um, the connector between the PDB and the flight controller has a pin that's designated for it. So if you bought something now and the PDB came out later with a current center, sensor, you'd be able to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's in the works, or at least we're thinking about it. We don't have any prototypes that have the current sensor on it. It only has the, the voltage monitoring. Um, but we're aware of it. I know Joshua Bardwell is a huge fan of the current sensor. So, uh, and I've never had one, um, but I understand that it's like really awesome to have. So, so we'll, I was talking with Sean about having that on the PDB. I don't know if he's actually added it. Um, we'll have to have him come on after he's, he's in school right now. So like, uh, we'll have to have him come on, come on after he has his finals. Um, and show off the prototype. And maybe by that point, he'll have the, the version 3 from Oshpark. Um, Oshpark is like the PCB service. Um, so, it's on our radar. So here, I'll just refresh this. This is the active contributor discount. Um, it's hidden under, well, when you check out, it'll give you a link, and then it'll also give you a link uh, from the About page, I think. Basically, you can log in with your GitHub account, and it'll automatically issue you a coupon code like this. If you're a very active contributor like I am, because I designed it, um, you can get 20% tops. Um, but even if you just do a few wiki edits, it'll put, bump you straight into the 10% uh, the mark, which is pretty good, I think. Um, and then with more edits, you'll go from 10 to 15 to 20. So um, yeah, uh, keep posted. I'll, I'll, I won't do many streams uh, during the weekend because I'm going on a float trip. Um, questions always can go to support at Chickadee Tech. Check out the website, Chickadee Tech. And uh, hopefully next week I'll do some streams where we're actually designing some new stuff, some new mods to go with Polystack. Um, not sure when they would be produced, um, but they'll be open source from the get-go. So if you want to jump on it, you'll be able to Oshpark it just like we do. Anyway, uh, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>